everyone. So it's been a while since I have uploaded my last video on uh, some tech tools and I decided to share once again because for the past few months I have been playing with hardware prototyping especially in the field of low power wireless sensor networks and I've been having a lot of fun but also learning a lot and making a lot of mistakes and what better way to share is uh, to make a video. So for this uh, episode, for this video, I wanted to share five things that I've learned uh, that must be considered when doing a hardware prototype version one especially if we are thinking of making an improvement or an iteration of that version one into version two one day. So let's go ahead and look at what are these five things that I've learned. Starting with number one, which is mechanical. Now, uh, as I've always kind of played with hardware and software, mechanical was least on top of my mind, but I feel mechanical is the most important thing. Let's have a look at my little project that I have here. So this is just a kitchen cupboard um, humidity sensor where you can put it on the kitchen cupboard shelf. And uh, for this, I have actually just used an old name card holder. And for my second project, this is something that you can actually take out of the house. I have kind of used a carabiner with an M6 drill hole on the PCB to hang it on my bag. Uh, so let's go through some project boxes actually. These are widely available on any e-commerce platform. I am looking at RS components, but of course you can go ahead and look at DigiKey, Mauser, or any electronics related e-commerce websites. And such electronic project boxes are widely available and they are available in different dimensions. Now, other than the project box housing for our project, I realized that this becomes a key component, the dimension of the project box uh, for the PCB that we are ultimately making. So uh, after I had decided to use uh, the name card holder in this case, I then have the dimension uh, that is possible for my PCB. And in this case, this was the dimension I came up with. And I also decided to use M2 screw holes for uh, spacers and nuts, and I found them immensely useful. So once again, when I switch back to the camera, as you can see here, I have the screws uh, right here, the nuts and the spacers, and I could use them to kind of prop it up on the kitchen cupboard shelf. So these were really, really handy, and they have to be built in as uh, the drill holes from the PCB design. For my second project, I also had drill holes, but in this case, the hole size was slightly bigger, M6. And uh, once again, if I show you what happened to the M6, a drill hole, I could actually put a carabiner inside it. So that was pretty exciting. And now I can hang this entire tiny little project on my bag or anywhere, um, maybe on the clothing that I would like to take it outside the house. So these are uh, the little things that we can build inside our project in version one when uh, going through even the PCB design. So mechanical is definitely number one to consider even before we uh, do any kind of designing. So for number two, I definitely go with the electronics itself. What kind of hardware you, we are using? Now, if this is the hardware prototype version number one, I found it very, very useful to actually use off the shelf modules so that it is, uh, it kind of proves the concept and it proves that the feature sets actually work. So for my first project, I really, really wanted to play with ESP8266. So I went with the off the shelf module uh, with, uh, e uh, with the WeMOS D1 Mini. And I also wanted it to be rechargeable. So I got the battery shield for WeMOS. Now you might say that uh, 
well, uh, what's the point of making a PCB? Because ultimately when I wired up in a breadboard, it kind of looked a lot like this. It proved the concept on the table, but I couldn't really put it out in the kitchen cupboard and use it for let's say a month or a couple of months uh, across the time frame because it was just very bulky and it was also very fragile with all the wires sticking out. Uh, the second important thing about electronics is that uh, I really, really found it handy to have uh, an off-the-shelf module that is basically open-sourced. So for my second project, uh, I used uh, the NRF52 Adafruit Feather Board, beautifully designed, and Adafruit has also made it absolutely open source. So basically the schematic is open source, which means that in version two, when I want to shrink the module and uh, basically not use the Adafruit module, but use the NRF52 chip itself with just the components on the board that I need for my project, I can do so because the schematics are open source. So for electronics, two very important thing. One, off the shelf modules and ensure that these off the shelf modules are actually open sourced. And next is number three, the power source. So first mechanical, then electronics, then is the power source. How are we going to power our little device? Now, because I am focusing on low power wireless sensor projects, I want it to be battery powered, but battery powered can be replaceable or rechargeable. Now for my first project, I basically got the rechargeable uh, LiPo battery shields. As you can see here, I got a LiPo battery here and it connects with the JST connector on board the battery shield here. Now for my second project as well, I also made use of a tiny LiPo battery with a JST connector and Adafruit uh, Adafruit's NRF52 board already has a charging circuit on board, so I could use it to charge it. Uh, the second thing about power that I found was very, very useful, which I did not do in my first project, was actually to have a power button. I have two buttons, one for the battery itself here and the second one for BLE. Now for the battery, I can actually just uh, power it on. So something like this. And uh, then only it will start measuring the UV index, which is the sensor on board here. Number four is all about the software. Now, especially for wireless sensor projects, there are basically say three kinds of software. One is residing on the hardware itself, which is the firmware. And I found spending most of the time developing the firmware because it has to be compatible and flashed onto the hardware itself. Uh, there can be a second type of uh, uh, software, which is a cloud-based, if the device is connected to the internet via, say, the Wi-Fi. And the third kind of software can also be some kind of client software. For example, in my second project, it was a Bluetooth low energy. Although it was never connected to the internet, it could interact with another Bluetooth device to display the sensor data on it. Now, since I was focusing most of the time on the embedded firmware of the hardware, I found it was very, very handy to use once again cloud software or client software that was already out there. So for the first project, which was Wi-Fi based, I found using IFT with webhooks very, very handy. So on the hardware device itself, it actually pings the IFT webhooks URL every six hours when it wakes up periodically and basically pings the sensor value there. And uh, inside the IFT, I have basically configured it to push the values on a Google spreadsheet. And uh, there I can see all the values being pinged every six hours. So it was very, very handy to use IFT and Google spreadsheet to record the data and not having spent much time developing it, maybe a little bit time to configure it. Now for my second project, which is uh, the NRF52, the BLE based project, uh, this little keychain that I had, it was using Bluetooth low energy. 
Now, once again, I was spending a lot of time developing the firmware on board, like reading the sensor data and also hooking it up with the button or switches. In this case, I found once again using another off the shelf uh, software. In this case, it is NRF Connect. It is available both on Android as well as iPhone. Uh, to basically read the data of the keychain without really developing much. So let me show you how it works. In the scanner tab, it has already detected a palm at Hutscape, which is this device. So I'm going to go inside it and try to connect to it. And here you can see the various services that have exposed, especially the environmental sensing and the battery service. So why don't we go ahead and look at the battery level. I'm going to click here to indicate and there you see the value is showing 66%. And uh, if we go and now check the environmental sensing, the UV index and the value is zero, which is correct. We are inside the room. So the UV index is all safe. So try uh, go ahead and try a uh, IFT or NRF Connect as uh, the choice of your software and you don't have to do much development. Now for the final step, it is all about user experience. There are certain things I found that we could uh, develop right onto our hardware or PCB so that uh, for a wireless sensor project, it can work without the internet. Now that is one of the common uh, complaints that we always have about IoT projects is that, hey, I always need the internet to work. And I wanted to ensure that there's something there that uh, ensures that we can still use the sensor data, read the sensor data, even though there is no internet. So let's uh, go ahead and look at the first uh, project. So inside here on the PCB, as you can see that I have the five LEDs and it kind of has a little indication like a ruler, 20%, 40%, all the way to 100% for humidity. And I have a little button here. So which means that, yes, every six hours it will wake up automatically, periodically. But if I'm in front of my little device and if I want to know the humidity, I also have a way to do so. So I'm going to go and uh, press the button here. And uh, let's look at the spreadsheet as well. So let me go ahead and press the little button here. And there you see it is about 60 to 80%. Well, good enough, not that accurate. But if the internet is available, uh, let's wait for a little bit. Uh, the spreadsheet should update. And there you see 5.47 p.m it once again pinged because I pressed the button. So this is something you can build in, uh, even though something is uh, periodically waking up, you can have an onboard button, which also wakes it up and pings the value to the internet. As uh, for my second project, I also wanted uh, the value to be seen, even though I didn't have uh, a mobile phone with me. And for that, I have this RGB LED right here and it changes color according to the UV index. So whether you have a little line of rulers as LEDs right here or an RGB indicator or even a display for that matter, it really, really helps the user because you, even without connectivity, you can read the sensor value there itself. So there you have it. Here are the five things that I've learned for a hardware prototype version one. Number one is mechanical. Number two is electronics. Number three is power or battery. Number four is software. And number five is the user experience. What else would you add in when uh, creating a hardware prototype version one? Uh, let me know and we can all uh, learn and share and have lots of fun together.